We all know that professional wrestling is scripted. We don't need to be constantly reminded, although thank you, non-wrestling fans, your continued efforts are always helpful. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean everything is predetermined. Some performers like to meticulously plot their match step by step, while others like to work out the big spots and finish, but call everything else in the ring as they go. Between that lack of structure and the fact that, well, sh** happens, there's always room for a cock up or two. Sometimes they're fun, sometimes they're just plain stupid, but sometimes they end up making a match even better. And if they can roll with the punches, the audience might not even realise that the spectacular moment they just witnessed was actually supposed to happen. I'm Adam Nicholas and these are 8 wild and unscripted WWE moments that made matches better. Number 8. Cena pulls down the Money in the Bank briefcase too early. Oh John, that Royal Rumble 2005 botch just wasn't enough for you was it? You had to go and try to top it. While the ending of Money in the Bank 2012 wasn't quite as memorable as that Royal Rumble, oh don't worry we'll get to that one in a minute, it was entertaining nonetheless. The match was decent, nothing earth shattering, Cena put Big Show through the announce table, that was kinda cool. Other than that, not a lot worth remembering, that is, until the final few seconds. Big Match John was trading knuckles with Big Show on top of the ladder when he proceeded to try smashing the giant over the head with the dangling briefcase. The only problem was, the briefcase barely moved, forcing Show to lean into each hit and even then, they still barely connected. However, in a moment of glorious spontaneity, the clasp on the case decided to break during another show-stopping briefcase blow. And of course, as a result, Cena was accidentally declared the winner. And that delightful, meme-ready look on his face tells you everything you need to know. It's more than likely he was supposed to win all along, but it definitely wasn't supposed to go down like that. Number 7. Jake Snake goes after Macho Man Now this may not have been a sanctioned match, but it happened in the ring and was definitely more entertaining than the actual match before it, so it totally counts. Before this moment on Superstars of Wrestling, Jake Roberts was working his way towards an epic heel turn. A fan favourite for years, Roberts began attacking all of the top baby faces in increasingly vicious ways. Although a segment with Ultimate Warrior was pretty sadistic, it had Roberts betraying his former ally by locking him in a room filled with snakes. It was also pre-shot and heavily edited, until it was painfully obvious that the Warrior was in no actual danger. Flash forward however to Superstars of Wrestling and this all went down in front of a live audience. Randy Savage had agreed to let Jake's very real King Cobra bite him in order to bring some authenticity to the segment. Sadly, snakes don't really understand the concept of kayfabe, and after latching onto Savage's arm for a few seconds, Roberts was unable to get his beloved Cobra to release its clutch. After about 30 seconds of Savage legitimately writhing in pain, blood trickling down over his arm, the snake finally let go, and Jake the Snake's transformation into a full-blown psychopath was complete. Number 6. Referee beats up WCW fan who jumped in the ring Now, I'm sure Team Malenko and Psychosis were probably putting on a great match, but when something like this happens, it's always going to overshadow the in-ring performance. Part way into the match, a very innocent WCW fan was having a drink from his can of Dr. Eh, uh, sorry, Mr. Pepper, and thought to himself, what's the worst that could happen? So off he went, hopping over the barricade and sliding into the ring, where the worst that could happen was referee Mark Curtis, who kneed him right in his stupid head before applying a nice chokehold until security arrived. And despite the cameras trying to ignore it, Bobby Heenan is having absolutely none of it, making sure everyone knows just how pathetic the fans' attempt of fame really was. The smallest referee in the world just took him down. How tough is that guy? They're taking Mr. Tough Guy to the sneezer. Maybe we should get him some cigarettes, he's gonna need him to bribe the screws. In fairness, if the fan was trying to be remembered, huzzah, it worked. You made it onto our list. Unfortunately, it's for getting your arse handed to you by the smallest referee in the world. Number 5. Royal Rumble 2005's Double Winners At the 1994 Royal Rumble, history was made when both Bret Hart and Lex Luger eliminated each other at the exact same time, causing them to be declared dual winners of the match. This was very much a scripted moment, aimed at setting up a match between themselves and Yokozuna for the title at WrestleMania 10. Fast forward 11 years, however, history repeated itself. At the Royal Rumble 2005, John Cena and Batista both hit the ground at the same time when Batista went for this finish, only to lose his balance and fall backwards over the top rope. The only problem was that Cena was the only one who was supposed to go over. Ha, <laughs> no surprises there then, right? It became immediately apparent that something was up. With no one knowing what to do, it turned into a very entertaining Raw vs Smackdown showdown as they awaited further instructions from the back. One Raw official held up Batista's hand, while a Smackdown referee held up Cena's, going back and forth each time the crowd cheering for their winner. Finally, a very pissed off looking Vince McMahon came storming down to the ring. However, the plot took another hilarious twist when Vince slid into the ring and managed to simultaneously tear both his quads in the process, leaving him sat on his arse on the mat, barking orders furiously at everyone in the ring. Eventually, the match was restarted and Batista won. But over the years, it's the comedy of errors that led to that point that have become truly memorable. Number 4. The Acolytes beat the hell out of Public Enemy for real. Do you remember that match between the Acolytes and Public Enemy on Sunday Night Heat? Nah, me neither. Although it wasn't exactly in the same spotlight as the main event of WrestleMania, that's probably because WWE have done their best to slide this one as far under the rug as humanly possible. So the backstory goes something like this. Public Enemy, a team famous for putting people through tables, had just come into the WWE from ECW and had issues with the veterans backstage. They then entered into a kayfabe feud with the Acolytes, and when they tried to change the ending to their match at the last minute, refusing to be put through tables by the Acolytes as planned, all hell broke loose. Farouk was throwing knuckle sandwiches left, right and centre, while Bradshaw tried to break a steel chair using Johnny Grunge's body. After beating a large portion of sense and probably a healthy side 
order of fear into public enemy, the acolytes made damn sure they went through those tables. Now would probably be a good time to note that this was not actually a no DQ match. The referee was just far too petrified to step in and interfere. Number three, Mick Foley falls through the cell. In one of the most iconic images of the Attitude Era, the Undertaker sent Mick Foley flying off the top of a 20 foot high steel cage, crashing through the announce table below. It's one of those OMG moments that pretty much stopped time for anyone who witnessed it and instantly became a defining moment in Foley's career, which also spawned one of the greatest Jim Ross calls of all time. And excuse me while I put on my best Jim Ross hat. <clears throat> Good God Almighty! Good God Almighty! That killed him! As God is my witness, he is broken in half! But while that first spot tends to get all the glory in this match, it's the second ridiculous bump that Foley takes, the one where Taker choke slams him through the cell and onto the mat below, that was actually the most dangerous. Unlike the first one, this one wasn't supposed to happen at all. Foley himself has said that this was completely unintentional, while JR has more recently suggested it was planned, but perhaps not quite the way that it went down. Intentional or not, it's clear that something went wrong during the second bump, as proven by the period of stunned silence from JR and Jerry Lawler, until King manages to finally squeeze out, that's it, he's dead. And while the second bump isn't quite as famous as the first, it bolstered the legend of Mick Foley and helped put The Undertaker over even more than the first one. And if nothing else, it gave us that lovely image of Mick Foley with a tooth hanging out of his nose. Number two, the glass doesn't break for Shane McMahon. If at first you don't succeed, for the love of God, man, just let it go. It's not worth it. It's just not bloody worth it. Perhaps someone should have given Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle this advice just before their street fight at the 2001 King of the Ring. Because sweet baby Jesus of Nazareth, that was bloody painful to watch. Now what was meant to be the most memorable spot of the night, ended up being the most memorable spot ever between these two, when Angle went to suplex Shane through a pane of glass, and the glass didn't break. Instead of smashing through it and leaving a pile of glass in his wake, Shane bounced straight off the pane, landing on the back of his head. Apparently whoever ordered the glass got the wrong kind, which left Angle trying to put a human body through plexiglass, instead of a nice weak pane of sugar glass. They made it through the first pane of glass on the second attempt, but unfortunately for Shane, the worst was yet to come. From the other side, Kurt tried to put Shane through another bloody pane of glass, as per the original plan, and can you guess what happened? That's right! The second pane of glass didn't break either, and Shane once again landed on his head. Shane was adamant that Kurt do it a third time though, and despite bouncing off the second pain twice, Angle finally gave up on finesse and chucked Shane straight through the pain head first at the third time of asking. Both men sustained major injuries from this spot, but hey, what the hell, they made an iconic moment in wrestling history, so yeah. And number one, Triple H's other quad injury creates a beautiful brawl. The first time Triple H suffered a quad tear back in 2001, the only real silver lining was that he missed the majority of the terrible invasion angle, which tainted pretty much anybody who was involved. The second quad injury, however, culminated in what remains possibly the greatest improvised ending to a WWE match ever. During a tag match with HBK against Rated RKO, Triple H lands awkwardly after a spine bust at Orton, tearing his left quad. It becomes apparent that Triple H is unable to deliver the scripted finish. The crowd starts to realise something is amiss, but before they can turn sour, HBK decides to go on a tear, if you'll pardon the pun, pulling off one spot after another before hitting Rated RKO with a barrage of chair shots. He then tosses Triple H a chair, and together they go on a magical chair ride, beating Edge and Orton to a pulp, which is punctuated by Orton doing a hellish blade job on his head. Then, to cap it off with literally a torn bloody quad, I should point out, Triple H managed to give Edge a pedigree, a f***ing pedigree, onto one of the announce tables, before HBK puts Orton through the other announce table with a flying elbow drop. The match may have ended in a no contest, but if you're going to end a match that way, it might as well be the most majestic no contest in the history of pro wrestling. Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. <laughs> but you should like, share and subscribe below anyway. And also, the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also, there's more content, probably above my head. Check it out. Or oh, don't. 50-50.